Hi everyone. Um, pleasure to pleasure to meet everyone. Uh, my name is Trey, and I am going to be hosting the session that we that we have today. So um, I'll I'll get into everything really really soon. Uh, but just first off, thank you everybody for for being here with us um, today. And uh, I want this to be a very very interactive um, session. So. Um, I'm going to be asking a lot of questions uh, across the entire course of the of the webinar, uh, but also, um, yeah, feel free in the chat at any time to um, as either send a message, or um, or just post. Uh, sorry, just unmute yourself and uh, and and ask a question at, at any time. Uh, once again, I want this to be a very interactive interactive session. So let me um, let me share my screen. Great. So today's session is on. Um, how do you build your network and leverage uh, your network to achieve your goals? And so that's going to be the main focus of the uh, conversation today. Um, once again, uh, my name is Trey Hunt, and I am uh, the co-founder of AfterJob. Um, and so before we jump into to this session, I'll just do a, a quick introduction on myself. So... Uh, my name is Trey. Um, I'm originally from uh, the U.S. My my undergraduate um, was at Harvard, and then I did my my master's at Peking University. And then after Peking University, um, I came to Kenya, where I'm based now, where I'm having this call from right now, um, and co-founded uh, the AfterJob Network. And so, what the AfterJob Network is is um, it's a rec recruitment and employer branding company. And so, what that means is we really help people to um, get new jobs and we help companies to find the right type of talent that they are looking for. And even though we are based in Kenya, um, we've worked with um, hundreds of companies across Africa over the, the past few years um, and helped those companies to get uh, really good talent for uh, short, short term, uh, full time and consultant uh, positions over a wide array of um, Fields. We work primarily with startup and growth stage companies, um, but we've, we've recruited for all different types of companies that need all different types of roles, whether those are software developers or finance people um, or law people or marketers. We've, we've really worked with a lot of different things. And so we've really talked with a lot of people um, about how they have used their networks um, in the past and what companies have told us about um, how people can best use their networks uh, to achieve their goals, both personally and in terms of a uh, in terms of a career perspective. Um, so that's a little bit just of a of a background on 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 me and on AfterJob, and things that people can keep in mind um, as we go through the course of the of the presentation. So the first question that um, we want to ask everyone is, what does having a network mean? So does anybody want to um, does anyone have any any idea or does anybody want to put in the chat what what having a network, uh, what having a network means? OK, I know we have some people. Uh, I know people have I know people have an idea. Um, I just can we get a couple of a couple of guesses or a couple of um, I just get, get a couple of uh, responses from people. Oh, OK, maybe just to uh, to to start things off. Um, Ibrahim, do you have any, any idea of, of what having a, a network means, or do you have any, um, suggestions in terms of, in terms of what a network means? All right. Um, good afternoon. My name is Ibrahim Halidu from Ghana, West Africa. So I think that, um, having a committee, a, a community of like-minded people within your reach, and you have deliberately built these people around yourself. So you share resources such as opportunities with one another. You mentor one another. You do the hand holding amongst yourself, and you know, with the aim of growing together. So some people could bring, let's say, their knowledge on board. Some people are highly resourceful in terms of monetary, you know, something that they can also bring on board. So that is how I understand about having a network. And maybe an example, mm. I have a lot of people within, I am a startup developer, I, a business developer, I train a lot of startups here in Ghana. So anytime I go to an event, I look out to people who are high networked individuals. One, I look at people who have done a lot in the ecosystem, both in Ghana and Africa at large. I look out for people who work in banks, 
So I take their contact and I always reach out to them, either daily or weekly. So when I have any mentorship events, I call on these people. When I have a startup pitch competition coming on, these are the people that I look out to become the judges in the competition. So that is how I understand about having a network. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Ibrahim. But yes, um, what Ibrahim said is, is exactly um, uh, what having a network is. It's a group of people that can be like-minded or um, uh, maybe even tangentially or adjacently um, minded to you um, who have um, who, who, who are within your immediate vicinity or just a couple of, um, of people away who can help you to um, move, move forward. And so Ibrahim gave um, a couple of really good examples of how he uses his um, network in order to um, uh, succeed uh, in, in West Africa. Um, and so we'll, we'll come across a lot of different examples um, also of, of, of different type of networking techniques across the course of the, uh, of the presentation. Um, and yeah, also I see, I see in the chat, Gracias, um, Gracias says yes, known people you can reach out to. Um, and then also Salami says, um, it, can, it can mean to have contact, um, uh, which can allow you to get something easily. Yes, all of those are really good examples of um, networks. So before, as, we can, as we continue going into what exactly it means to have a network, it's really important to understand a couple of key concepts, okay? so. The first concept that we're going to, to go over here is six degrees of separation. Does anyone know what six degrees of separation means or has anyone heard of the term six degrees of separation? Okay, maybe let me ask one person in the chat. Uh, Berenice, uh, have you, heard, um, have you uh, ever heard of the concept of six degrees of separation or have any idea of what it is? Okay, no worries. So, the concept of six degrees of separation is that um, essentially, okay, no worries, no worries. So uh, essentially the idea of six degrees of separation is that every person on the planet is only six degrees or six people away from anybody else on the planet. So um, as you can see here, this is just, this is just uh, an example to illustrate, um, but let's say you're Tom Hanks and you wanna get in contact with Barack Obama. You see, Tom Hanks is just one, two, three, four, five connections away from Barack Obama. And so the, the reason why this concept is so powerful is because as you continue to build up your networks, as you think about who you need to be getting in contact with, if you need to get in contact with someone who you think is really outside of your range or really outside of your reach, or there's no way that you're ever going to be able to get in contact with him, just remember that you're only six degrees at the most you're only six degrees of separation from somebody else, okay? So keep that in mind as you really think about how you are going to um, build your network um, and how you're going to um, leverage your network to, to achieve your goals. You're never as far away from others as you, um, as you think you are. So keep this, keep this in mind. Another uh, very important concept as we continue going through is uh, Dunbar's number. Um, so here it says, it says right here what Dunbar's number is. It's, it's the number, um, this, this was a term that was coined in the 1990s by um, a, um, an academic named Robin Dunbar. And this is essentially the, the, the um, amount of uh, meaningful or sustainable relationships, social relationships that an individual can maintain. So that's around 150 meaningful relationships. Um, uh, that, a, that an individual can man, maintain. So why, why do you think Dunbar's number is also an important uh, kind of concept or an important theme that we can rely on for, uh, for this presentation when you, when you think about building your network? Does anyone have an idea? Does anyone have any, any, um, does anyone have any theories about why it's important to keep Dunbar's number in mind? Right, right, thank you. Thank you, Christy. Thank you, Christy. So um, yes, I think, um, Right, right. Uh, Christy and, and Gracia have, have, have put in um, a, really, uh, a, really, a really good thought here. So oftentimes when we think of networkers, when we think of um, politicians, when we think of people who have a really, really big um, uh, a network or you know, business people, wh wh whoever it may be, oftentimes um, we think, ah, oh, that person knows everyone, that person has, 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 has really good friendships with everyone. But oftentimes it's not really 
the case. As you can see here with, with Dunbar's number, um, when it comes, there's a very big difference between having uh, people who you can maybe call in a, um, a, a favor for, people who, who maybe know who you are, you know their name, uh, they know your name, and then people who are actually meaningful um, in terms of uh, people who you build sustainable, um, like long lasting relationships relationships with. So um, even if you want to become the biggest networker in, in the world, or you want to have the biggest network in all of the world, just keep in mind uh, kind of the limits of, of what this can be when it comes to having actual meaningful relationships and uh, distinguishing between having a meaningful relationship and just having perhaps an acquaintance or somebody who, who you are familiar with. So just another concept to keep in mind as we, um, as we think about building up a, a, a network. So um, we've got six degrees of separation and then we've got, we've got Dunbar's number. So now let's talk about the ways in which people can actually go about uh, building their network. So um, as Ibrahim um, mentioned earlier, one of the reasons why it's so important to have a, a very powerful network um, is because without other people's assistance and without um, the support of others, it's oftentimes much more difficult to get where we want to go in life. That can be um, school-wise, that can be uh, business-wise, that can be finding a job, um, but all of these things are really, really, um, no, matter, no matter which, which field you are, the constant factor is the human factor. And um, having a network will always be useful regardless of what the, um, regardless of what the field is. So first um, way in which we, we, we suggest people building their networks, and this is from what we've heard um, from many of the companies that we've talked with, as well as many of the, um, many of the people that, many of the job seekers, many of the business people that we've walked, talked with, is that alumni networks are very, very key in terms of building up your network. So why is, um, why is an alumni network a, a, a good way in which to, to build uh, your network, to build your community? Um, why would uh, an alumni network be a, um, a good place to start off? Does anyone have any, do have any ideas? Exactly, exactly. So um, Gracia says that um, the people have something in common and they know each other a little bit. That's, that's a great reason. Um, does anyone have any other reasons why an, an alumni network could be a very good, um, a very good place to start? Okay, so an, another reason why, why an alumni network can be really, really good is because oftentimes an alumni network also has a lot of resources attached to it. So many universities will have um, an alumni office. Um, which really makes it easy to, to find other people in the network. Um, using other type of, of networks usually don't have such an inbuilt or such a built-in um, uh, system of reaching out to people. Um, and then the other thing with, al with alumni, when it comes to specifics or what Gracia is saying, is that um, many of those alumni have been in the exact same uh, position as you. Um, they know what it was like being at your university or at your high school or wherever it was. Um, and they, they also feel some, some type of sympathy or some type of empathy um, to, your, uh, to your situation. And so I think alumni networks are, are one of the, the things that um, people oftentimes um, know exist, but they don't really know how to, how to utilize them or they don't really take advantage of them the most uh, the, in the way that they best can. Um, and so uh, the first step is usually to get in contact with either your, the alumni office at your school or um, oftentimes, a lot of universities will have a, um, a club or um, an organization that is um, either in, in certain cities in the world or in certain countries in the world. Um, and then using that uh, organization, you can usually get in contact with more people um, either in the, in the country or in the city or, or, or wherever it may be. So alumni networks are great, um, not just for professional reasons, but also just for finding people who have had a similar experience to you, um, like how uh, Gracia so another way in which um, uh, building networks can be can be very important is, or ways in which people can build networks is social media. So does anyone have um, what do you, what do, there are a lot of social media is out there, but what do some people think are some of the most effective social media for building a a network? Does anyone have any ideas? Or maybe no one maybe no one here uses social. media. But even if no one uses social media, still, um, there's a lot of very popular social media out there. 
Um, can anyone name a couple of them that they think could be really good for, uh, for building a network? Okay, BabLab, BabLab is, BabLab is a good one. Yes, 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 Christy, exactly. Um, LinkedIn is, is probably the biggest um, social media when it comes to building your network. We'll, we'll talk about LinkedIn a little bit later because it is such a powerful tool. Um, but besides LinkedIn, are, are there any other social medias that people think could be um, useful for building a, um, a network? Indeed, okay, indeed, indeed is good. Indeed is good for, um, yeah, particularly for job related things, indeed can, can, indeed can be very good. Um, any others that people suggest? Okay, I think another, another uh, one that can be very good depending on what you are doing. So this depends a lot on um, the either type of product that you're, you're looking for, or the type of industry that you're in. Um, Facebook can also be good, though I know it's not necessarily as, um, as popular with, with the younger generation. A lot of older people um, who um, oftentimes are in more managerial positions in companies, they have maybe more leadership roles, um, can, are still on, on Facebook. So um, that's also can be a very good tool, maybe not as much for the younger demographic, but for um, an older um, demographic, depending on the type of people that you're trying to, to, um, to get in contact with. Um, social media, uh, Facebook can be a good social media tool. And so um, I think it's, it's also really important that when you use social media, you use it intentionally. So I know my brother on, um, on Instagram, for example, he just watches you know, videos for, for hours and hours and hours. That's not using social media as a tool to grow your network. That's more using it as an entertainment tool. But social media can be very, very powerful when it comes to actually building your network if you use it in that type of way. Um, so just keep that in mind the next time that you are on uh, LinkedIn or, or Facebook or Instagram or, or wherever it may be. So here I want to go in a little bit more. Yes, uh, Gracia, that's, a, that's, a, that's an excellent, um, excellent one. Twitter, Twitter as well. You find a lot of people, particularly a lot of intellectuals, um, a lot of people who like to uh, share you know, their ideas, a lot of thought leaders, um, a lot of industry leaders are on Twitter. Um, and one of the easiest ways to get people's attention um, and to grow your network in that way is by uh, putting out your own type of ideas, your own type of content, um, and uh, engaging with those people in a in a conversation. Um, those are people who um, you might start up might start off with a single tweet, but could easily grow into um, more and something much uh, something much more adept than that, depending on um, the content that you are are sharing. Um, but here, I really want to talk about uh, LinkedIn as a uh, LinkedIn as a tool. So. When, when people think of LinkedIn, what do they think? What do they think of? Why is, what is, what is LinkedIn? Um, I know I didn't, I didn't know, really know about LinkedIn or use LinkedIn until I was way out of college. Um, but what did, um, like, what is, is LinkedIn? Who, who knows? Or what, what, what do people know about LinkedIn? Right, right, right. So uh, Gracia says it's a social professional platform to find jobs. Um, so she split it into kind of two, separate uh, areas in this, in, in, in this point. One is a social professional platform and one is to find jobs. And yes, I think um, when we think about uh, finding jobs, I think the traditional way was uh, just to go on Indeed, go on Monster, look for job posts and apply to them, apply to them, apply to them. But that is not, um, I'd say the, the, the 21st century or you know, the 2022 way of, of, of finding a job. Um, right now, one of the best ways to find a job is to be active on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn, um, for those who are maybe a little bit unfamiliar, LinkedIn, as Gracia is saying, is similar to Facebook, but it's very job focused. It's very professional focused. It's a social network for professionals. Um, but the difference between um, uh, maybe LinkedIn and some other platforms is that there are jobs that are posted on the site but there are also um, hundreds of millions of users that are also on the site. And so um, you know, people like you know, Bill Gates has a, a profile, Richard Branson has a profile, um, but besides those kind of big celebrities, um, many, many, many um, uh, people who are hiring, uh, many people, uh, many other type of people have, um, many other professionals have uh, profiles on, um, on the site. Um, and so you can then get in contact with those people much more easily um, than if you were just to um, maybe look for their email or, or try and find a way to get in contact with them. So LinkedIn um, can be an incredible way to um, grow your professional network 
um, in particular. Um, and we, we have at AfterJob, we have an entire um, kind of course on uh, LinkedIn as well. Um, but it, it's, it's really a very powerful tool um, which can be used to um, uh, get in contact with people who would otherwise be um, maybe unreachable or who would never um, have a way of getting in contact with you. Um, so just keeping in mind the six degrees of separation, um, LinkedIn can be a great way to um, move people closer and closer to, to who they're looking for. Um, and then uh, lastly, we have attending, uh, attending webinars. So um, everyone here is at a, a webinar. Um, I'm, I'm sure there are people inside the group that uh, you don't know or that you're just meeting for, for the first time. Um, it's one thing to attend the webinar. It's another thing to actually get in contact with the other people who are on the, um, who are on the platform. So I know someone who found a job uh, because they saw the name of everybody on the webinar. They added them um, on LinkedIn and then started conversations from there because they already had a mutual point of um, contact, a mutual point of interest, uh, which was then able to be leveraged into future conversations and then um, other types of, of opportunities down the road. So um, it's also very important not just to attend the webinar, but similar to with social media, use them in a proactive way um, so that you are able to, um, so that you're able to really take advantage of um, every single aspect of what is being offered by the people who are hosting the, the webinar. Also, um, besides the attendance, um, attending someone's webinar, particularly if you're interested in um, their field, you're in interested in, the, in their industry, um, it can be a great starting point or a great kickoff point for uh, talking with them uh, in the future or, or adding that person to, to your network saying, I attended the webinar that you hosted and I thought this, I thought this, would you like to talk further on this? But a lot of people are very open um, to that because you've taken, um, you've taken an interest in, their, um, in, in, in what they've hosted. So does anyone, before we go on to, to, to social events, um, does anyone have any questions so, so far? Does anyone have any comments so far or, or anything like that? Okay, cool, we'll, we'll continue. Um, so all the things that we've mentioned so far have been very much uh, virtual. Um, okay, great. Uh, uh, but there's also, of course, the old fashioned way of, of social events. Um, I think, one of the ways, and one of the reasons, just going back to LinkedIn, why it's so important is because at a social event, what is critical is to talk with as many people in the room as possible, or at least be visible, talk with the people who are there. On LinkedIn, um, you're in a room, it, it's, it's the same type of concept, but it's virtual. So um, in a social event, there might be a few hundred people, you're talking with them, you're expanding your network in that way. Um, but on LinkedIn, you're in a room with thousands and thousands and thousands or millions of people. Um, and you can then choose from those people who you would like to, who you would like to connect with. So um, the, the good thing about uh, the, virtual, the virtual methods that we've just talked about is that they can be accessed kind of at any, any point of the day, while social events um, are a good time to uh, leave an impression, but they don't happen as, as often as some of the other um, uh, things that we, that we talked about. So you might be saying, okay, Trey, you, you've talked about all these different things. You've talked about social media. You've talked about um, LinkedIn. You've talked about um, you've talked about you've talked about a, a bunch a bunch of different things. But um, how am I going to go and uh, get people to notice me? Um, how am I going to? I'm sorry. It looks like my uh, let me share again. So you, you, might, you might be saying um, all, all of these questions about, okay, Trey, you've mentioned how I can use these tools. Um, you've mentioned um, the different ways in which I can, um, different ways in which I can get in contact with others, but, but how am I really supposed to, to do it? And so my answer to that is that you need to build your brand. Um, and so when I say build your brand, um, when I say build your brand, what does that mean to what does that mean to um, everyone? What is what is your brand? What uh, is your? Oh, go can ahead. I, oh. Can I step in? Go ahead. Um, someone last said it is um, the marketing image of a product, a service, a business, or even an individual. So the kind of image that you have, the perception, among other things. Branding moves beyond colors. Branding moves beyond 
um, logos. And mm. it has to do, uh, it, it, it has a lot into it. And he delved it by talking about brand persona. He talks about brand identity, brand loyalty, among other things. This is what I have to share about brand. Okay, great. Um, thanks, thanks for that, Ibrahim. So that is, that's really good when it comes to a brand for, as you're saying, like a, a product or a, a, a company. What do you think that means for an individual? Like, what does that mean for Ibrahim's, uh, Ibra Ibrahim's brand? Or what does it mean for Ibrahim? What does, what does Ibrahim's personal brand mean? Please, is it directed to me? Yeah. <laughs> what does Ibrahim stand for? When the name Ibrahim is mentioned, what comes to people's mind? Mm. In Ghana, mm -hmm. when the name Ibrahim is mentioned within my ecosystem, what comes to people's mind is about building startups, innovation, inclusiveness, sharing knowledge, and simplicity. Mm. That is what comes to many young people when they hear about Ibrahim. Mm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So what many people say um, a, a brand is, or what many people say a, a personal brand is, is uh, what people say about you when you are not in the room. So exactly what Ibrahim said. So when Ibrahim is not in the room, people talk about him as the startup guy, they talk about him as the person who, who helps other people out. Um, that's exactly what your, uh, your, your, your brand is. And so how can, you can, um, as Ibrahim saying, you can only talk with so many people. If you wanna build your network, you wanna build your brand and get people to know about you. You can only talk with so many people, right? Like in a day, I can only talk with, you know, however many people I, I come across, however many events I go to. But what is a way in which I can build my brand um, like very, very effectively, even if, um, I'm sorry, I keep, I'm sorry, I keep getting uh, disconnected, but what, what, is, what is a way in which I can, I can build my brand even if um, I, for example, am not, I'm not meeting with somebody? What is a, uh, what is a way in which I can, I can still continue to, to, to build my brand? Does anyone have any thoughts on how I can, or how anyone can build their brand without, um, you know, without actually physically talking with anyone? Yes, okay. So um, as Gracia says, yes, you can do it by uh, improving what you do. Um, but another great way of, of doing that and the way that you can show that you're getting better at what you're doing is by uh, social media and some of the tools that we, we were just talking about. Um, there are plenty of people who have um, become, uh, people would say on LinkedIn, for example, influencers um, or, or people who have become thought leaders just by sharing their ideas on social media. So think of thinking about it in terms of a, um, in terms of a uh, an event, if you um, if you go to an event, you can only talk with um, a few um, people there. Um, but if on LinkedIn with a single post or on Twitter with a single tweet, um, you can suddenly reach out to thousands of of people at a single time. And the more that you produce good content about what you're interested in, what you're an expert in, and all of that, the more people are going to want to come to you. So building your brand and building your network is not just about you reaching out to others. It's also about, um, yes, exactly. Um, hi, hi, Dennis. Um, yeah, so, so Dennis um, says exactly what, what I'm saying here. You can build a personal brand by being integral or doing something well and consistency so that people can identify you by that. So if Dennis is constantly posting about startups, if Ibrahim is, is constantly posting about startups, constantly talking about it, um, soon, instead of Ibrahim reaching out to people, People are going to be reaching out to Ibrahim in terms of, oh, I know you're really good at startups. I know you really think about this. You think about that. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I'd love to work with you on this and that. And so keep that in mind as you build your network. It's not just about you reaching out to others. It's really important that you create content. You produce content that makes other people also interested in coming to you. Um, and you can do that on Twitter if that's your platform. You can do that on LinkedIn if that's your platform. But the main thing is to produce content that people will associate with your brand and that your brand remains consistent. Um, another way in which you can build your, um, your uh, network is by doing online courses. And so um, someone had previously mentioned um, Baobab as you know, a, great, a great resource. 
And um, there um, are a couple of very, really good um, online courses that, that Baobab hosts. Um, and since uh, many of the people here are associated with Baobab and affiliated with Baobab, you have access to these courses. And so I highly suggest that you um, uh, take advantage of these, of these resources so that you can get better idea and get more perspective on how to build your, sorry, on how to build your, your professional network. Um, and I'm sure that, um, yeah, Gracia has just posted in the, um, in the, in the group, um, in the chat, how to build your professional network and how to build a professional digital profile. So please take advantage of these resources. Um, these are things that a lot of people would kill to, to have, um, to be able to have access to. Um, so make sure that you take advantage of them um, since, since you have the privilege of, of doing so. Um, and so I just want to touch on a couple of, of, of case studies really quickly um, before we before we run out of time. So first, um, does anyone know who, who Tim Ferriss is? Has anyone heard of Tim Ferriss? Okay. So so Tim Ferriss is um, he he calls himself a, a human guinea pig. He just does a lot of experiments um, about the the human body, the human mind, learning, um, networking, all this type of stuff. So um, he he first wrote a book called um, the Four Hour Work Week. And then he wrote a book, book called The Four Hour Body, and he wrote another one called The Four Hour Chef. But he's all about you know learning and and trying to uh, make yourself the best you that you can you can be. And so one of the exercises that he loves to have people do, and I think would be great um, if if people in this chat actually tried this, is that just to kind of stretch how much um, people understand how powerful their network can be and how close they are to other people. What he loves to do is he tells students to he gives them one week, and he says. In one week, I want you to get in touch with the most high profile person um, that you think is possible. And so that could be a president of a country, that could be a famous actor, that could be you know, a world famous scientist or whatever, or whatever, a very famous business person. But he, he dares the people to get in contact with, um, with, with the, the people that they, um, that they are looking to get in, in contact with. Um, and time and time again, uh, people are able to get in contact with with people who are who they initially thought were much more outside of their range. Um, and so, for example, um, in one of the classes, uh, the person, uh, one of the students, was able to get in contact um, with uh, Eric Schmidt, who was the the uh, CEO of Google at the time. And so, what do you think? Uh, in order to get in contact with these people, once you find their email address or once you um, yeah, once, you, once you've gotten a way to contact them, what do you think is the number one, um, the number one uh, piece of advice when it comes to how you're supposed to approach that person? So let's say you've got Elon Musk's email address, or you've got um, Barack Obama's email address. Um, how, how, what, do you, what do you think is the number one kind of factor in terms of getting in contact with that, with that person once you reach out to them? Does anyone have any idea? Okay. So there's um, there's an article about this which which people can read and I can I can I can send to people. But the the main point is that you should not ask for help immediately. You should ask that person about um, something that you think is important to them, and something that um, or or something that you can help them with. Um, but for most people, like for the person who got in contact with the CEO of Google, um, he knew that that uh, CEO had a particular interest in like a a, a type of philosophy that. The, um, the student also had an interest in. And so he reached out to him talking about that. And so you'd be surprised um, with kind of how you can get in contact with people and how you can grow your network, even really big shots, um, uh, even if, even if um, uh, but, but even if it's, it's not really what you expected, even if um, you uh, don't do things in such a, a, a direct way. So when you are reaching out to, to, to people, keep this, keep this exercise in mind. Um, another case study that we want to, to talk about when it comes to using networks is, um, is my co-founder, Harriet. Um, so Harriet is from Kenya, um, but she studied in the US and then studied in China. Um, but then when she came back to, to Kenya, um, it was a little bit difficult um, to, to figure out what to do because she'd been away for, for, from Kenya for about, for about six years. But it was through her own um, networks um, through through school, through alumni, through alumni networks, also through social media, um, and through a couple of other um, resources, that she was able to um, find the first type of uh, jobs that she had in um, 
in uh, Kenya. And then um, her and I are uh, college uh, classmates. So we, we, we connected through that way. And that's how we started, um, that's how we started AfterJob. So um, when you're thinking about your own type of, um, when you're thinking about your own type of moves and when you're thinking about the, um, the next moves that you want to do, um, keep that in mind and use all types of resources um, that you have at your disposal. Um, and I'd also, uh, Harriet is also on, on LinkedIn. She's very active on, on LinkedIn. So um, I'd also recommend getting in contact um, with her as well as getting in contact with me or anyone else who you think would be, uh, would be, would be good to get in contact with. Um, and the last, the last case that I'd like to, to talk about is um, the tragic case of Gary Kildall. Does anyone know who Gary Kildall was? Or who Gary Kildall is? Okay. Does anyone know who uh, Bill Gates is? Okay, I'm sure, I'm sure everyone knows who, who Bill Gates is. But Gary Kildall could have been Bill Gates. So in the way that we talk about Bill Gates today, but like we, we could potentially be talking about Gary Kildall in this way. Um, but long story short, uh, Gary Kildall had a better product than Bill Gates. And um, the software that uh, Bill Gates, um, that, that, built, that, that became popularized by, by Bill Gates essentially, was going to be Gary Kildall's software. Um, and it was Gary Kildall's software was, I guess, the first choice, not Bill Gates's choice. But um, because Gary Kildall didn't use the, the networks that he had effectively, and because he prioritized other things and didn't really um, play the networking game the right way, didn't leverage his networks in the right way, um, Bill Gates is the one who ended up becoming you know, super successful and um, you know, super big. Um, and, and no one knows about Gary Kildall today. So there's also some good good videos online about, about Gary Kildall and what exactly happened with him. But it's, it's just to emphasize that oftentimes, um, you know, a, a lot of people here are you know, you're going to going to great schools. You have great you have great futures ahead of you. You're studying you're studying great things. But it's also always important to keep in mind the human factor. Um, keep in mind the human factor. Um, and just because you've you know you've studied something great or you have a great product or you have a, or you have a great idea, oftentimes the network or the networks that you have, the networks that you leverage, how you how you leverage those networks, are sometimes just as important as you know what you've studied what you've created um and and this and that so i recommend doing uh, some some research on, on, on gary kildall as well just to get the details of of his story um, and how even though he had kind of a better product he um he, he messed up with the networks and so he, he he was banished to to obscurity and so before we go into uh, just the the questions and answers from from everyone you might be saying okay these are these are some good these are some good ideas or these are some good concepts, but I want to learn more. What can I do to, to, to learn more? And so here are a couple of um, resources that um, we recommend when it comes to building your network, uh, when it comes to um, just getting a, a stronger network. And, and also once you have that network, how to use that network. And so um, they're kind of in three different, three different categories. So one of the, the biggest ones ever is, this is kind of the, the grandfather uh, text of all the other type of, of text in this in this category is how to win friends and influence people. Um, has anyone read how to win friends and influence people? Or does anyone know anything about? Um, okay, Ibrahim, um, what do you know about uh, what do, what do you know about how to win friends and influence people? All right, so I read a book in twenty nineteen. It was introduced to me by a friend. At that time, I was a staff in a networking hub here in Accra. And one of the principles that I learned from that book is to know people by their first name, know, people, know people's name, their full name. And one, of, one other principle is I learned from the book is do not condemn people. And mm. if you want to even condemn people, you have to speak good about them before you even say something uh, bad or maybe harsh, and it's not mm -hmm. even encouraged in the book. And mm -hmm. also, you should network. One of the things that is uh, centered in the book is to network with people. Mm -hmm. Written by Dale Kennedy. Maybe because of my mm -hmm. accent, I couldn't pronounce the name well. Dale Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> So Ibrahim, Ibrahim just did a, a great job of um, 
uh, summarizing the book. So as it said, over 16 million copies sold. Um, as, as Ibrahim said, it's a great way to learn how to um, uh, build your network, get in, in contact with people and how to uh, build great relationships. Um, these other three books, Super Connector, Never Eat Alone and Your Relationship GPA are all about, to, are all about how to best utilize your, your network. Um, oftentimes people think, what, what people think about when it comes to, to networking um, is different from what the, the practice is in, in real life. So all of those books talk on that. Um, and then lastly, with, with The Ride of a Lifetime and, and Shoe Dog, um, so these are two, two business books, but when you read those books, you really get the, in work, in life, oftentimes relationships are, uh, similar to what we're saying about Gary Kildall, relationships are oftentimes just as important as the product that you're doing or the work that you're doing. So um, Robert Iger, Bob Iger, is the former CEO of Disney. I think he's actually just become the CEO again. But at the time, he was the, the former CEO of Disney. And you really get an understanding of how important relationships are um, in, in, in the corporate world. And Phil in uh, Shoe Dog is a story of how Nike became Nike. And um, Phil Knight didn't just um, have Nike succeed because he had the best product, um, but also because a lot of the people that he met and the relationships that he built along the way um, helped him to do that. And so as you go into your job search, as you go into you know, starting your own company or, or whatever it may be, those are great real life stories that aren't just principles, but um, the actual, um, the actual um, uh, uh, stories of people who uh, had to build networks in order to succeed. And then there's lastly, uh, Man on Wire, which is a, a documentary and um, also very good about, about building relationships and, and, and building networks. And so that is actually it from me. I know we have just a couple of, a couple of minutes, um, but does anyone, have any, does anyone have any last questions or does anyone have anything that they would like to ask regarding, um, uh, yeah, anything they'd like to ask regarding building a network or any of the concepts that were presented or anything like that. Um, yeah, does anyone have anything that they'd like to, anything they'd like to touch on, anything they'd like to know? Or does anyone, does anyone have any other resources or any other kind of books on using networks or movies or documentaries or anything that um, they would like to recommend to the group when it comes to, um, networks or anything like that. Ibrahim, are there, are there any, you, you read um, how, to win, uh, how to Win Friends and Influence People. Have, um, are there any other you know, books like that that you've read that you think would be good for, for people to, to read as well or any movies you've seen or anything like that? Okay, so what, what, science of, what science of success about, Ibrahim? Okay, as we're waiting for Ibrahim. Okay, so I mean, what does, um, why, do you, why do you recommend influence? What's, uh, what's influence about? Okay, as we're waiting for them, uh, Gracia has a question. She says, after getting in touch with people you want to network with and finding out what is important to them, what do you do next, especially if their interest is way out of your space? Okay, that's, that's, that's a great question. So I think um, with this, uh, it's important to kind of classify what exactly your objectives are for getting in touch with people. So um, I know that some people, for example, on, on, on LinkedIn, um, they will add you know, dozens of people every day just for the sake of adding them. Um, and then once they've added them, they realize that they have hundreds or thousands of people or tens of thousands of people that are in their quote unquote network, but that these people really have nothing in, um, nothing in, in common with them or they can't really um, assist them in, in any way or that there's no mutually beneficial uh, relationship in, in any way. And so um, I think, kind of the answer to, to that question is that it's important to know why you're reaching out to somebody in the first place. Yes, it might be a, um, it might be a fun game to you know, try and see if you can get a response email from Barack Obama, for example. Um, but at the same time, you should have an objective in terms of figuring out why exactly you want to get in contact with this person. So I think that filtering and uh, kind of monitoring who you're trying to get in contact with um, is, um, is the best. Um, but if, uh, it also depends on what, on what, their, on what their interest is. Um, just because their professional interest is outside of, outside of your space doesn't mean that their personal interest is outside of your space um, and vice versa. And with so much um, information that we have um, across social media, across 
um, you know, Google and Wikipedia and all these other different types of websites, um, it's typically um, not too much of a challenge to find some type of common point. But oftentimes uh, there can be a point uh, that just as simple as like that person works at a company or works in an industry that you are interested in and you want to talk to them about it. Um, maybe a little bit more uh, creative than, than that or you know, put a little bit of a personal twist on it. Um, but that's, that's, that's how I would say you, you figure out exactly um, how, you, uh, how, how you get in contact with that person and, and what, you do, what you do next with them. Um, thanks so much for that question, Gressa. Um, does anyone else have any um, questions or any other suggestions for, um, any other questions, any other suggestions for how to leverage your network, how to use your network, um, and and the like. Okay, as we're waiting for any any last questions, I, I do just want to say that um, I think that it is um, okay. So what Dennis says is my supplement is that it is not just connecting with someone, but remaining in contact or keeping the connection is the best. We shouldn't connect uh, with people and talk to them just when when just in rather when just in need. Rather always say hi to keep connection alive. Okay, Dennis, that you made a great point that um, is very similar to some of the points made here in, in Super Connector and, and Never Eat Alone. Um, uh, as, as Dennis said, one of the, the, the key points in Never Eat Alone, for example, is that your relationships and your network is like a muscle. If you do not exercise that muscle, then it will become weaker um, and it won't grow or it will deteriorate. Um, and so as, as, as Dennis is saying, it's really important not just for you to get in contact with someone and pass out a lot of business cards or, or do a lot of you know, LinkedIn connecting and this type of stuff. It's really, really important that you actually engage people. You see how you can help them. Um, and you also ask them for, for, for favors. Because um, oftentimes when you, well, oftentimes people are actually afraid to ask for favors um, because they think that it's um, you know, going to, to stress the other person or it's going to put um, you know, unwarranted need on the other person. But that's actually, when you think about it, a way of um, strengthening you know, your network. Um, because when you go to somebody for help, or when you go to somebody asking them for a favor, um, they they now know that that you are somebody who like um, who you trust them to to help you. Um, you trust them that you you trust in them to a degree, or you know them to a, a degree, or you believe that you know you're close enough to a degree that that person is now um, you know willing to willing to help you. And so, um, as Dennis is saying, don't just uh, you know connect with people and leave it at that. It's important to build on relationships um, and, and use your network like it is a muscle so that you can continue to, to strengthen it and, uh, and continue to, to grow it, um, while of course also being available for others um, when, when they need your help as, as well. Um, and kind of just in line, as we're, as we're waiting for any other um, uh, last questions, as we, um, uh, as we, um, uh, as, as Anissa is saying, I think that all of this stuff is, is easy to say, but it's also very important to do. So if you don't have a LinkedIn, get a LinkedIn. If you're not creating content to build your brand, get a, get, start making content to, to build your brand so that people are now coming to you instead of you having to, to reach out to others. If, you haven't, uh, if you're not familiar with some of these ideas in you know, Dale Carnegie or uh, Keith Ferrazzi or, or, or these type of people, start reading those books. So, we can only present as much information as, um, as, as, as there is, but it's, it's just as important that you actually start actioning on the, um, actioning on the information that is provided. Um, so that it's not just knowledge in your head, but you're seeing the actual results and going to, um, going to, to build that network. Um, and yeah, Gracia has just posted the free Baba courses again in the course, sorry, in the chat. Um, that is a really great place to start um, as well, um, and and yeah, it's 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 a really good it's a really great place to start as um, everyone continues to hone their network and develop their network and and, and strongly build their build their network. Um, yes, does anyone have any other questions or any other comments or any other suggestions for the um, for the other members of the chat or anything like that? Okay, and Credo says these courses are also available in French on on Baobab. So for any of the um, any of the francophone 
uh, there are plenty of the Francophone uh, people in the in the chat, or for anyone who even just wants to practice their their French, um, these courses are also available in in French on the Baobab uh, on the Baobab platform. Um, great. Um, any other questions or comments um, in terms of this? I guess I'll ask. Ah, uh, Salam and Ibrahim, one more time. Do either of you want to share any additional information on either science of success or influence? <laughs> All right. So uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. And um, I, I thank everybody who has joined the program uh, webinar. Actually, this book I did, I just mentioned, Science of Success, was um, given to me by my mentor, and I'm here to start reading. But the book that I personally will recommend is um, it's called Mindset. I'll type it in the chat box. It's called Mindset, and it's written by Carol S. Dweck. Mindset by, and she positioned herself to uh, state that everything around the world, everything around us, every thing that we win, every success has to do with the mindset. So we have to reconfigure our mind. We have to rewire our mind to be winners. We have to wire our mind to be learners. If we don't rewire our mind, reconfigure our mindset to the position of winners, we will always be the type of people who complain about the system is no good, Africa is this, what and what. If all these challenges are being faced by all other people around the world, why are they winning? And why are some people failing? It has to do with mindset. And that brings me to the second book that I'm yet to read, Psycho-Cybernetics. I think we should also get that book because that, these two books, they move together. Because you have to put people who reconfigure their mind to be winners, they always win. Every battle around the world, every battle that we fought is won within. If everything is within, if you cannot win inside you, you cannot win outside. So I would like everybody to try to get that, especially people operating in the startup world. You have to have, you have to motivate yourself first. Otherwise, outside of the world, there are a lot of negative people. But if you position yourself as a winner, in fact, nobody can stop you. So Mindset by Carol S. Dweck is a very important book. I'm still reading it. If you are so busy, you can get the audio book to be listening to it. That is what I have to share. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that, Ibrahim. Um, I've also heard uh, really good things about uh, Psycho-Cybernetics. Um, so maybe that will be my, my next read uh, as, as well. Uh, but Mindset, um, Psycho-Cybernetics uh, are two, two books that we can add also to, um, to the list that we have here. Um, okay, any last, any last comments or any other suggestions or Salome, uh, would you like to add on influence? Okay. Um, well, in that case, um, in that case, um, I just really want to thank everybody for, um, attending the webinar today. Um, once again, excuse me for uh, my connection dropping sometimes, but Thank you so much, everyone, for attending the webinar today. Um, and then also, if you, um, yeah, if you have a LinkedIn, uh, feel free to add me um, at any time, of course. Um, and um, also, yeah, feel free to to add Harriet or anybody else from AfterJob. And I really hope that um, everyone had a great um, a great time and, and learned some things uh, learned some things today. And um, hope everybody has a great rest of the week. You and I were breaking bounds on bow bow.